I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I feel like it's important that we let the people know. Don't you... talk about yesterday, please. Don't no, talk about... about... Well, oh. I mean, firstly, let's talk about yesterday. So, all week you said to me, can I come on the helicopter to Dubai for your after dinner? I thing? asked you one day. Coogan, you asked me a dozen times. You were, like, begging me. It was embarrassing, right? So... I said, in the end, I moved people around. I was like, yes. This is a lie already. Right, and it was like, yes. And I got you on the helicopter, right? We left the workout at 7.30 and we all walked swiftly to the Viano to take us to the helipad. When we got in the Viano, I said, because I was looking out for you as a mate, where's Coogan? And Dan Underwood says, He's lost his microphone, right? This is the kind of thing you do, to be honest with you. So 10 minutes later, we're in a rush to get the, the slot, right, for the chopper. 10 minutes later, you still hadn't arrived. Your, car, your bag is already in the car. So I phone you and I say, mate, what are you doing? And you go, I can't find my microphone. I can't, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Five more minutes... You haven't come. And in the end, they said, like, we have to go, otherwise you're going to miss this. Area. So I phone you up, I, I deload the bag, I give it to security, and I say, give that to that fucking arsehole. And off we go. I phone you, I go, I'm really sorry, but we've had to go, you can't come. And you're like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Now, we travel to the helipad, it's actually quite a long time. Then we fly to Dubai, it was 20 minutes in the air. Then we land at a helipad, and it's 20 minutes to Phileas Fogg. I get to Phileas Fogg, who is there? Coogan Cassius. So we've, we've, we've paid up for the chopper. You've ended up getting a cab and getting there 20 minutes before us, right? That's number one. Number two, today you do your usual thing, just about to go up on the, the dais and you can't to me, you go, um, uh, do me first, yeah, when you finish, yeah, do me first, yeah, yeah. And I go, I didn't say do me first, well, I said, well, could we well, do something, yeah. You did, but anyway, you didn't. You say, "Can we do it?" You know, I'm going to do something. You went straight after, or something like, yeah. "Do me first, straight after." Like I'll be, yeah, like you always do, right? I go right then, whatever. Although Parsons is on your heels, right? Come down from the thing onto the red carpet. Look over. Who's there? You and the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, with your puppy eyes, right? Oh, oh, Golden Boy, Oscar, oh. Oh, I found you there. Oh, selfie, Oscar. Oh, you're a selfie. Oh, oh. And now, people should know in this interview that I have done every interview here today. And this is my last one because I've saved you till the end. And I don't have a lot of energy for this interview. And I can't tell you how it's going to be. But things have to change because I ain't having it. I'd like to correct your story a little bit, but your story is actually quite humorous. So... Can I just say, the reason why I was interviewing Oscar De La Hoya is because you were with some TV company doing an interview already. So I looked you over. No, hold on a minute. I looked you over and thought, all right, fair enough, he's doing that. I'll do Oscar. You finish that. Oscar's still going on. That's what happened. OK, well, it's concerning that we both looked at each other and thought, what an arsehole, I'm not going to do the interview. And, and apparently that's how you felt as well. You know when some people, they were like, they break up with, in a relationship and they go and sleep with someone, then the other thing went Oh, do you know what? I'm going to sleep with someone now because you did. That's how you felt. That's how I felt, yeah. yeah. So you looked at me, right, for Ab on, live on Abu Dhabi TV, oh, one, and okay. you went, I'm going to do Oscar. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Let's talk about the card. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Chantel Cameron, bang mm. up for it. Mm. And McCaskill was giving it to yeah. her today, the little blank yeah. of the handshake. It's a great fight. Um, I'll be honest, it's a great card. I mean, I thought Oscar spoke really well. I haven't listened to your interview with him, but everything he said, I don't always agree with him, but he was right up there. You know, we're not getting great fights at the moment. We are getting a great fight on Saturday. We're getting a great card on Saturday. And fighters generally want to fight each other. 
And Bivol Ramirez is a tremendous fight, as is Cameron against McCaskill, as is Rakimov against Elfa Barrett. Even Cal, you're fine, Galau, you're fine, great fights. And it's going to be a really good night. Big crowd incoming. Uh, Wayne tomorrow at Cafe Del Mar. Get shorts on, boy. And, uh, yeah, really excited for Saturday. Somebody told me there's a pool party going on there tomorrow at the same time as Wayne. I'm a, I'm a bit too old for pool parties, but... Since that clip went viral of Kiki, do you love me? That was a long time ago. And that weren't a pool party. That was on a yacht. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to ask you as well, Joe Caldean is here. Mm. I don't know why Joe Caldean is here to put himself through this, because it is very bittersweet for mm. Joe Caldean to be here. But speaking to him uh, in an interview yesterday, he seems really like pissed off, to be honest, mm. with the whole situation. And you've explained the situation regarding the IBF on numerous times. But Joe's obviously a little bit of a, not a different version to that, but mm. a different look on that, which mm. he's gotten because he's the one that's been stripped. Mm. Yeah, I think that when you negotiate a fight with a fighter's team, you know, we had a situation where we did everything we could to get Joe Caldina a shot at a world title, right? Unfortunately, when Agawa took that fight with Caldina, Rakimov was the mandatory. So we sat down with Tony Sims and Charlie Sims and said, this is the situation. You're going to have to fight Rakimov next with no exceptions and you have to do it within 90 days. No problem. They were up for the Rakimov fight. We all are. We, you know, he, he accepted that fight. The problem is the time frame, and no one could have possibly envisaged that a week after the Agawa fight, Joe Caldina would get injured. And then a couple of months after that, when he started camp, he would break his hand in the first punch of the spa. So all of a sudden, you've got a situation where Joe Caldina must fight Rakimov. He's been waiting. Somehow we managed to get an extension from the first injury. The fight actually was due to take place by the end of September. We managed to allow the IBF and Team Rakimov, thankfully, to allow the fight in November. <sighs> Bullet dodged. Then Joe Caldina breaks his hand. He's out for an additional six months, right? The only thing that the IBF would have done differently if he wasn't mandatory and wasn't had to fight Caldina within 90 days, was to put Joe in recess or put an interim championship in place. The fact that he had to fight Rakimov, you know, I feel for Joe. The reality is, is that by the time he's ready and fit to fight again, he would have been out of the ring for 10 months. You know, these governing bodies are not just going to keep titles sitting there. And especially when Joe got the opportunity when he probably shouldn't have because Rakimov should have got the opportunity, but we managed to get an exception through with the IBF. So it's terrible luck for Joe Caldina, but we have worked tirelessly, not just to get him that shot with Agawa, but to make sure that Zelfa Barrett and Rakimov have both signed contracts to fight Joe Caldina next. So as disappointed as he is, and he's had terrible luck, and we all feel for him, he has a chance to become a two-time world champion in his next fight against the winner of Saturday, which, by the way, is a tremendous fight. And Zelfa Barrett is the underdog for that fight, but I just have a sneaky feeling that Zelfa Barrett is going to be crowned world champion on Saturday night. And I'll tell you what, Zelfa Barrett against Joe Caldina for the world title is a tremendous all-British fight, and hopefully that's the way it all goes. Manchester or Cardiff? Manchester's bigger. I mean, it all depends on, you know, like Joe is a big star at the moment. Unbelievable knockout of Gower, but Zelfa can become a massive star on Saturday on this platform, winning a fight like that. Okay, um, so I was talking to my mate earlier, mm -hmm. Oscar, yeah. and um, I asked him a question about you, actually. Yeah. It was my final question. And I said, first of all, it's great, obviously, he said some nice things about Eddie Hearn uh, in the press conference about promoters coming together. So I asked him... I said that you regard yourself as kind of a bit of a hated man amongst certain promoters and broadcasters in America, outside of the zone, obviously. What, and I said, what, do, what do you think? No, I didn't say that. I said, what, um, what do you think about what you've done, as in Eddie Hearn has done in America since he's been there? He didn't really answer the question. He said that this is my territory. But he kind of swerved it a little bit like a politician. So mm. he didn't really slate you but he didn't really answer the question, what does that well, tell I guess, you? I guess that could have been worse. That probably tells me that he don't really like me but doesn't want to say anything too bad because we both work on the same platform. I don't know. Um, look, I'm not an American promoter. I am a global promoter. I am the only global promoter in the world of boxing. I promote fights in a multitude of territories around the world. 
that no one else does. Um, I want credit, I'll be honest with you. I was going to say, I don't want the credit. I fucking want credit, right? Because sometimes I look at what we're doing and I go, How do, when has anyone ever done this in the history of boxing? Never. I mean, literally, week after week, we're in different countries promoting different shows around the world. So you can say, this is my market. Yeah, but that, that's your only market, right? And Oscar De La Hoya is a good promoter. I, I really like Golden Boy. I don't really deal a lot with Oscar, but Eric Gomez, Robert Diaz, they're quality people, and we should do more business together. But I've made a lot of mistakes in America, right? And I was probably a little bit arrogant and naive when I went in. What was your biggest mistake in America? Probably thinking that I would understand the market faster than I did. But I have no regrets. I mean, one of the greatest or one of the most um, complimentary things that can be said is, if you said right now, who's the biggest promoter in America, right? I'm on the list. Yeah, you agree with that? You might not think I'm number one, but I'm on the list. I've promoted, uh, top, I've promoted the biggest fights. Top 12, fights. definitely. I've promoted the biggest fights in America this year. And I'm not saying that I'm the best promoter in America, but I'm definitely top of the list in one. Well, I didn't really get that right as a Brian Clough comment, wouldn't it? But anyway, so, and like no UK promoter has ever gone into America and done what I've done signed a huge TV deal promoting Canelo Alvarez. I've done two shows in Vegas this year with Canelo Alvarez. I broke the attendance record for Canelo Alvarez against Billy Joe Saunders. You know, we've done Taylor Serrano at Madison Square Garden. This is one of the greatest fights in the history. That I, I want some credit. I want some credit now. I've had enough. No, 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 no. But uh, Oscar, they, a lot of the Americans feel that, like, and again, you get like Leonard Ellaby. He doesn't know what he's doing. I mean... Really? Like, do we look like a company that don't know what they're doing? I mean, anyway. But um, I don't want to upset anybody. Do you know what? It's funny because you and Leonard have worked together before, haven't you? Not really. I've been at press conferences where you and Leonard have been there, so there must have been some so sort of link. I was at a press conference once when James DeGale fought Badu Jack. Wasn't actually really involved in the fight, other than I think we had the UK rights. And I turned up at the press conference and the fight was in New York or Boston? Can't remember. New York. Yeah, it was, it was the, actually. I was there, New York. Yeah, it was the press conference. And Leonard or Mayweather Promotions or probably PBC removed my name or didn't want me up. I remember this. You remember that, yeah? And I turned up, flew in, I was like, Floyd Mayweather's on a presser. I'm going to smash it up up there. Went up there, it's like James DeGale. Jim McDonnell, someone else, and I'm like, I'm well, just gonna walk down here. No, or oh, it must be down the other end. Hang on. Well, let me just make check, check one more time down here. And they took my, they didn't want me up there. Who specifically? All of them. And me and James haven't always got on, and I, you know, some things went right and some things went wrong in our relationship. But James DeGale said, I want Eddie Hearn up here. So thank you, Chunky. And I went up there, I smashed that press conference. I was unbelievable. I told Badu Jack he wouldn't win a round. It just so happened to be a 12 round war. I think it was a draw, but yeah, they, they never want me around. But I, I, I take that as a massive compliment. Because why wouldn't you if you want me around? Yeah, that's unless like, you felt that's like you, presence. that's like you having a press conference here or in England and like Delahoy or whoever turning up. Let me tell you. And then you not who, having a... Let me tell you about this bullshit industry. That happens all the time. There are people in boxing who would genuinely go, that I don't I don't want him up there. I don't 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 don't, don't put De La Hoya up there. Don't put De La Hoya up there. Don't don't I don't I'm looking at it going, this is a legend of the sport of boxing. I want Oscar De La Hoya up there. Talk some shit. Get in the photos. Go and have some photos with some fans. Show everybody that big time boxing is here in Abu Dhabi. Why wouldn't you want the biggest promoter in the world up on the table talking shit, getting you views? Because they're just... Oscar you're talking about? No. Oh, uh, oh good, you mean... Good, yeah, great banter. <laughs> but genuinely, I just don't understand. This is how people operate in boxing. It's like, 
They'd rather, and this is like tank against Ryan Garcia, rather than Steven Espinosa and PBC going, look, just let the zone air it as well. Ready to sign? You'll sign, you'll get it announced next week. They're going, whatever, you don't let the zone involved in this show because it's De La Hoya, it's Eddie Hearn. Blah, blah, blah. Rather than just going, like, use me. I, it baffles me. You know the amount of times where I was saying, like, you know, a bit like Fury and Wyatt and like all these people. So I, would, I would be saying, Eddie, you must come because I'm going to talk shit i'm going to drive up views and pay-per-view buyers but you'd rather diminish your own product to stop someone it's like the same thing with with the baddie jack thing it's like they have talked imagine how mad it is right there's been a conversation between mayweather promotions and pbc where they have gone don't let eddie hearn sit up here on the table don't let eddie hearn sit up in the table fucking how fucked are you that you've got to even think like i mean Again, that, that people would go, don't, don't, let, don't let Golden Boy have anyone up here. Don't let Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya is a legend of sport. Get him up here. He could say something that could all of a sudden go viral. Oh, there's so much more publicity for the fight. You know, he wants to win this fight. He wants Zerdo to win. I want Bivol to win. It's us against Golden Boy. It's Zerdo against Bivol. It's the narrative, baby. I do want to ask you about his tweet he put out yesterday, which obviously everyone here has asked him about in relation to Terence Crawford and Errol Spence. Um, what is your take on that situation? We saw obviously Terence Crawford's comments from his uh, video, but also now Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, I mean, I've, basically, I haven't really read it all, but he's blaming now Heyman and PBC for everything. I think everybody's always to blame, but I would say that I do think PBC and Showtime are the ones that always are less inclined to work with people, in all honesty. Um, and I think Oscar, I think Oscar wants to make big fights. I do. Like I don't. Oscar's a bit out there sometimes, but he's not really bitter. Like he's not. Like I don't see Oscar sitting in a ballroom going right, whatever it takes. Like we'll stop this fight. I mean, they are not being involved. Like. Showtime and, and Heyman have built Tank Davis pretty well, actually. I think he's a big star. But by the way, DeZone and Golden Boy have built Ryan Garcia. And there's nothing in it in terms of who's a bigger draw between those two, in my opinion. So why wouldn't you air it on both platforms? Who cares? Make the fight for boxing. But I think all this blowing up is good for boxing because it just puts more pressure on people to get things done. Can I go now? Okay, no, no, I've got a couple more. Um, Anthony Joshua. I know, but he won't stop. Anthony Joshua, yeah. and oh god, we've already done the helicopter. Thanks, Dan. You've got a name check in here as well. Um, Anthony Joshua comes to Abu Dhabi at some point in the next 24, 48 mm -hmm. hours. You're going to plot his next move. What's the deal with this wilder email situation? Did you make no, comments? Mate, all I said was I got a reply to my email from August this week, and saying what? Just we'd be interested to know more about you know a possible fight with AJ. Um, That's my, good. It is good. And I, I think Deontay Wilder wants the AJ fight. It's massive money for him. I mean, look, he's coming off the back of the Hellenius fight and not sure how that did, but Wilder's a big star, very exciting. And I just think it's a case of plotting out whether AJ has a fight first, then fights Wilder, or goes straight into Wilder, or when he's going to fight. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk this week and see what we do. Do you still think that AJ Wilder is bigger than AJ Fury? Probably not. I did, <coughs> I did say that, but... You did say that, yeah, yeah. I did, but... It's close. I think globally, I just think it's a tremendous fight. Like, it's so exciting. But AJ Fury is obviously a monster fight. So, in an ideal world for you, what would you want to happen in terms of Joshua? Uh, straight into a Dillian White fight? Yeah, I like the Dillian White fight, but Dillian's got to beat Franklin <coughs> on November 26th. That's going to be a very tough fight. And, and if Franklin wins, he'll fight AJ. So, we shall see. Chris Eubank Jr. looks to be fighting yeah, Liam Smith that, yeah. potentially this year or early part of next year. Mm. So, yeah, December yeah. 17, I think. Um, he had to move on at some point as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, you know, he will fight Conor Ben, but when? We have no idea. Could be in six months, could be in two years. Like, obviously, there's a process about to determine that. But, um, yeah, it's a very tough fight for Chris Eubank Jr. And December 17, it's nearly upon us. You know, it's six weeks away. So, we shall see. Can you give us any updates on what's going on with Conor Ben's legal situation? No. Just about to undergo a hearing, I believe, in the next uh, few days or next week, and then that process. I no, no idea if that's a week, three weeks, but obviously it'll be underway. Um, December 17th, is that looking unlikely now? Uh, we will decide next week on December 17th. Okay. Where would that take place? In the UK. Yeah, but where in the UK? I'm fucking telling you. Why, why should I tell you? 
the fans, mate. For the fans. For the fans. It's not. It's really just for your own. My just, own what? Just generally, you love. You love to know everything, don't you? I've never asked you nothing ever. Oh well, thank you. Meow, meow, meow. Getting ratty, are we? You've only done 19 minutes. Is that how long I've done? More than I've done with everybody else. Time to go back to the apartment. To the apartment? To the hotel. I think I was sitting in the current bum for a little 20 minute glow up for, to, for, the, for Cafe Del Mar tomorrow. Cheers. Look forward to it. Thank you very much, Eddie Hunt. I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.